There's a lot of controversy about hip rotation and how much the lower body should be moving in the golf swing. There's obviously a school of thought called the, the backswing X factor uh, that suggests that the lower body should be quiet in the backswing and allow the upper body to coil against that for power. Uh, I have a problem with that because we see a lot of golfers that simply aren't able to do that too well. I think the, the advice is well intentioned in the sense that we want to have uh, a stable lower body from the perspective of lateral movement, so not allowing the hips to sway or slide. But a lot of people get that advice of a stable lower body misinterpreted and actually stop rotating the hips. So I want to show you an example here uh, from our 3D golf analysis here at UVA of what I'm talking about with poor rotation of the hips. So this is a 3D animated skeleton of a, of a visitor to the clinic. And you'll see I'm just going to play the swing in a little bit of slow motion here. And we'll break it down frame by frame. You can see about uh, a quarter or a third of the way up the backswing that the right hip has really stopped rotating. So let me go back down to the start. You'll see the right hip, which is here, that's that right pelvis, starts to rotate and then it quits. And then what we see is a compensation of now the arms and hands getting completely stuck or wrapped around the body. Okay? That's an inefficient position for anybody, even somebody with tremendous flexibility like this person has, because you're going to have to make an immediate compensation with the arms to get them back in front of the body for leverage. Okay? I'm going to show this to you in a graph just so, we can, just so we can quantitatively prove to you the fact that his hip has stopped rotating in the backswing if you didn't happen to catch it with the animation. So here we have the right hip transverse angle. That's the rotational plane of the right hip. And you can see that he rotates about 5 to 8 degrees and throughout the backswing basically flat lines. Okay? So that hip has stopped rotating. At the exact same time that the hip has stopped rotating, you'll see that it starts to dip. This is the lateral angle of the hip on the right side. In contrast, the left hip continues to rotate. You'll see that there's a nice smooth curve there that continues to happen into the transition of the swing. So his right hip has stopped rotating. He's compensated for that with some left hip movement. And we can see that both in our 3D animation and in our quantitative graphs. So now we're going to take a look at a plot of, of the effects of this lack of hip rotation in the right side. Okay? These are major body angles. And the blue line here is how much the arms are moving. The green line is how much the torso is moving. And the red line is how much the hips are moving. Because his hips stop rotating early on in the backswing, his arms have gotten wrapped around his body. And he's got to compensate to come out of that. His compensation is to move the arms first. You can see this blue line, the arms, bottoms out and then rises up much earlier in the downswing then does the red line bottom out or the green line bottom out. And we know in rotational sports, efficiency is all about the hips leading with the torso in second, the arms and hands then slingshot through. So we can think about a tennis forehand, we can think about a baseball pitch, and the sequence of those things should be the same as the golf swing, which is the hips, the red line, should bottom out first, then the green line, then the arms bottom out and come up. His lack of hip rotation has caused the arms to get wrapped around him. They must wrap back in front of his body to compensate for that issue. So what we've seen on camera is something that might look um, across the line or a little bit over the top is really an issue with hip rotation of the right side. So there's two ways to approach uh, advising this person on how to go about improving their game. And the X Factor group would say, well, just resist the lower body, keep it stable, in a hope that that would, that would prevent some of the lateral movement, the excess lateral movement that we've seen in his swing. There's another school of thought that says, well, let the hips rotate freely, and that will sort of cancel out some of the lateral motion as white noise. I kind of take the middle road approach in that, let's get this golfer to be able to rotate his right hip first, and then worry about um, specific swing drills.
We talked about how we'd like to drive efficient hip rotation without things like sway and slide to compensate. So the golfer we saw over at the computer was able to rotate his hip just a slight amount before this crept in and that got his arms wrapped around his body and we know we're going to have to compensate in order to get out of that position. So I'm going to show you a couple really simple drills here with just some elastic tubing in a chair that will help drive the correct rotation of the hip in the golf swing. So this tubing just gets anchored around some kind of a post, could be the leg of a chair or a couch, very simple. And I've set this up so the tubing is trying to cave my knee inwards. Okay? Now you'll see if my knee caves inwards, my body dips, my arms would get wrapped around, and I would be in an inefficient position, poor rotation of the hips. So we want to change that. We want to be able to stabilize the knee and allow the hips to purely rotate. This exercise will really help. Again, the tubing's trying to pull my knee in. I'm not going to allow that to happen. I've got about 80% of the weight on my left leg, and this right foot is just a toe up. And now I'm going to go ahead and drive rotation of the hip, the outside muscles here. You'll notice that from my head to my hips, I'm in a nice straight line, and I'm not letting that knee cave in. If I need to make the exercise harder, it's really simple. I just squat down a little deeper, and I involve the back hip muscles a little bit more. Again, the knee stays in place, the hips rotate. This is the same drill with the elastic band seen from a different angle. And you'll see that as I squat down to load up the left leg and keep the right leg just about 20% of my weight there, you'll see I can turn and rotate, but my knee doesn't cave in. If my knee caves in, You'll see my entire body complex want to point towards the target, and we know that's not very efficient. So the knee stays in place, the tubing's trying to pull it in, and I use those glutes, the kings of the swing, to keep everything in place. Don't forget to do this exercise with the other leg. So I'm going to show you another excellent exercise for efficient rotation of the hips, which will keep us in balance in the golf swing. All we need is a chair and a little pillow for the head. So I go down to the ground here, get myself set. One leg is on the edge of the chair, another is propped up, as you can see, free. I'm gonna bridge my hips up with just this leg. So we take a little backside strength to do that. And then from there, I just control rotation of the hip through the left leg that's posted up on the chair. So this right leg that's hanging out doesn't really do anything. It's just along for the ride. An advanced version to get better hip rotation in your golf swing. The first drill we're going to look at to translate hip rotation out into the golf course or driving range is the one leg drill. And I want to thank Sean Clement from the Richmond Hill Golf Learning Center for showing me this fantastic drill. You're the best, Sean. Really simple to set up to this drill. I'm going to put 80 to 90 percent of my weight into the left foot, okay, not on top of it, but into it. And then this right toe just goes as a little bit of a post. You'll notice as I start swinging back and through that that sets me up for the right hip to open and close very easily. That also sets me up to keep my hands in front of my chest. So I'm not allowed to add weight as I go into the backswing on the right foot. Okay? I'm not allowed to go this way. Again, that's not pure rotation of the hip. That's a sway and a slide. What I want to do is have about 90% of my weight into my left foot arch, play the ball in front of the zipper, and this is just a little post for balance. So I set up here, go ahead, let that right hip open and swing through. The drill is successful if I can hold my balance until that golf ball lands. There's a second drill that really helps us keep our balance and get pure rotation out of the hips in a golf swing. So what I'm going to do here is use a little bit of weight 
to actually instruct me how to keep my balance correctly. What happens a lot of times in the golf swing is the club is light enough where the arms can manipulate the club, but I can still stay somewhat in balance. This weight's not going to allow me to do that. So I go ahead and I, I've got a 17 pound kettlebell here, it's 10 or 8 kilos, and I'm going to go ahead and pick that up properly with my hips. And I'm basically going to wrap one hand around the other similar to a golf grip. I'm going to get into a little bit of a golf stance. And you see I'm just going to initiate a little bit of momentum here and let this weight swing me. I'm putting very little effort into swinging this weight because I'm balanced. If I try and wrap my arms around, this extra weight is going to make that very difficult. It's going to feed into my central nervous system and the brain's going to say, hey, wait a minute, something's wrong here. Let's go ahead and keep our weight between our arches and you'll notice how nicely my hands stay right in front of my chest as I do this drill. This drill is also great to go ahead and keep my spine angle or my posture throughout the swing because again, that extra weight teaches me to keep the butt back, counterbalancing the weight of the arms. So I can't wrap myself around and get out of position without really lighting up the central nervous system and saying, hey, something's wrong. I'm going to go back, let the weight swing me, and stay in balance. One final note from this drill is you're going to feel a terrific sensation of where you can apply leverage or the hit in your swing. We see so many golfers that they get to the top of the backswing and they want to drive it down from there. They want to hit that ball from the top of the swing and that causes so many problems. You won't be able to do that with this weight. We take it here, get it up to the backswing and as it falls, then I can feel where to give it the extra push of momentum. There's a second drill that really helps us keep our balance and get pure rotation out of the hips in a golf swing. So what I'm going to do here is use a little bit of weight to actually instruct me how to keep my balance correctly. What happens a lot of times in the golf swing is the club is light enough where the arms can manipulate the club, but I can still stay somewhat in balance. This weight's not going to allow me to do that. So I go ahead and I, I've got a 17 pound kettlebell here, it's 10 or 8 kilos. And I'm going to go ahead and pick that up properly with my hips. And I'm basically going to wrap one hand around the other similar to a golf grip. I'm going to get into a little bit of a golf stance. And you'll see I'm just going to initiate a little bit of momentum here and let this weight swing me. I'm putting very little effort into swinging this weight because I'm balanced. If I try and wrap my arms around, this extra weight is going to make that very difficult. It's going to feed into my central nervous system and the brain's going to say, hey, wait a minute, something's wrong here. Let's go ahead and keep our weight between our arches and you'll notice how nicely my hands stay right in front of my chest as I do this drill. This drill is also great to go ahead and keep my spine angle or my posture throughout the swing because again, that extra weight teaches me to keep the butt back, counterbalancing the weight of the arms. So I can't wrap myself around and get out of position without really lighting up the central nervous system and saying, hey, something's wrong. I'm going to go back, let the weight swing me, and stay in balance. One final note from this drill is you're going to feel a terrific sensation of where you can apply leverage or the hit in your swing. We see so many golfers that they get to the top of the backswing and they want to drive it down from there. They want to hit that ball from the top of the swing and that causes so many problems. You won't be able to do that with this weight. We take it here, get it up to the backswing and as it falls, then I can feel where to give it the extra push of momentum. Rather than steal lesson time away from a swing instructor, we bet this golfer is more likely to improve when taking future lessons for the simple fact that he is more physically ready to do what instructors are asking. Faster progress leads to more lessons, not fewer, because the golfer will tell his friends. By improving hip turn and translating that into a better sequence, we've got a healthy, happier golfer 
likely to reach the next level of performance.